I promise. Once you watch this video, you will never ever forget how to solve this question. I am talking about the problem sort colors on lead code. This is also known as the touch national flag problem. Why is that so? Let us find it out. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Going forward, we will see why the most obvious solution is not feasible and what do you actually mean by an in-place solution. After that, we will try to come up with an efficient solution to the problem and then as usual, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you can understand and visualize how all of this is actually working in action. Without further ado, let's get started. So first of all, let me try to simplify the problem statement for you. In this problem, you are given an array that has the integers 0, 1 and 2, correct? Now all of these integers are representing colors, right? 0 represents red, 1 represents white and 2 represents blue, correct? So just to simplify the problem, what happens is you are given an array that has these integers and you have to make the adjacent integers together, right? Such that all the zeros are together, all the ones are together and all the twos are together. So in a way, what you're doing is you're sorting the array, right? But the catch here is that you have to perform this sorting. First of all, that is in place. That means that happens in the original array itself. And then the next condition is that you have to do this without using any sort of library sort functions. That means you cannot use collections.sort in Java and some of these equivalents in Python or JavaScript or any other languages, right? So just to understand it even more, let us look at some of our sample test cases. In our first test case, you can see that I have an array that has six elements, correct? Now, if you have to group all the zeros, ones and twos together, your resultant array will look something like this, correct? You can see that all the zeros are together, all the ones are together and all the twos are together, right? Similarly, in our second test case, you have this array with three elements. Once you group all the elements together, you will get your final resultant array where you will have a zero, one and two. Now, it is not necessary that your array will have all the three elements. You can also have an array that only has zeros and ones. So in this particular scenario, in your output array, you will also have just zeros and ones. You will not have the two. And that is pretty obvious, right? So given all of this, now, if you feel that you have understood the problem statement even better, feel free to first try it out and make sure that you're doing things in place. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution and see what you can do about it. Let us take up a bigger array this time and try to generalize some of the things. So I have this array with me and now I have to group all the zeros together, all the ones together and all the twos together, right? So in a way, what will happen is your resultant array will look something like this, correct? And what you can say is that you can achieve this result if you sort your existing array, right? As soon as you sort it, you will get your final answer, right? And this indeed is the expected output. And you can achieve this by doing a quick sort, insertion sort, or any of the sorting techniques that you know, right? But this problem expects you that you do not use any of them. And then also you have to do it in place. That means you have to modify the actual array and not create a new array. Because if you see that, okay, you don't want to use sorting, but then you can do this by actually taking a new array. So currently this array has a size of 10, right? What you can do is you can create a new array that has a size of 10. And currently it is empty. What you can do is you can start a pointer from the first location. And then if you find a two, just start adding this element to the end of the array and then move forward. Next, you find a zero. All zeros have to be in the beginning, right? So as soon as you get a zero, just add it to the starting location, right? Now move forward, you get a two again. So what I will just do is I will add this two to my last, correct? Now keep on doing this. As you move forward, you see a one. Don't do anything about the one and just keep on moving ahead until you either see a zero or a two. Once again, you see a zero. So what I will do is I will add a zero over here and now move ahead to a one. Don't do anything. Move ahead to a zero again. So I will add a zero in the beginning. Move ahead again, you see a one, don't do anything. Move ahead again and you see a zero. So add a zero in the beginning once again. Now, once you are at the end of the array, just look at all the blank spaces. In all of these blank spaces, you can just fill out the value one. And voila, you have achieved your result, correct? 
all the zeros, ones and two have been grouped together and you did this without any of the sorting techniques, right? But in this solution, what you missed is that this did not happen in place. That means you had to perform all of these calculations in the original array itself. You don't have to create a new array. So what can you do about it? Let us go back to the basics of the problem and we will start once again. Once again, I have my sample array with me, right? And do you remember what did the problem statement say? The problem said that all of the zeros represent a red color, all the ones represent a white color and all of the twos represent a blue color, right? So in a way, this example input set actually looks something like this, right? I have color coded all of them so that you can now visualize what is actually happening and what do you want to do, right? So for a moment now, what you can do is you can just get rid of the original array and we will focus on our colored array because colors make things easy to understand, right? Now that you think about the problem statement, what is the eventual end goal? The eventual end goal is that all of the zeros should come together, right? That means all the red parts, they will all come together. Next, all of your ones should get together. That means all the white parts should get together in the middle. And then at the very end, all of your twos should get together, right? So this is kind of your end goal, right? This is what we want to achieve. And that is the reason this problem is called as the Dutch national flag problem, because this looks like the Dutch national flag, correct? So what you want to do is just keep an eye out on the goal that you want to achieve and then try to come up with a solution. Try to observe what is happening. All of these zeros, they go in the beginning part, right? All of these two, they go in the very end part and all of these ones, they are in the middle part, right? And that is exactly what we'll try to do. Sometimes it is better not to overcomplicate the problem and just start looking at the basics. So do you remember how in the previous solution, we were first filling all of the zeros from the beginning, all the twos from the very end, and then we filled up all the remaining ones, correct? So in this problem also, what we can do is we can take the help of some pointers. So I will take one pointer that is at the beginning and I will call it start. I will take another pointer that points at my very end location and I will call it end. And then I will take one more pointer that I call middle. And this middle pointer is also pointing at the very start location for now. What you have to do is you have to start computing things now. So first of all, what do I look? I look at my first element and that is two. Where should two go? Two should go at the very end, right? So what you do is just swap this two with the very last element and see what happens. So when I swap two, I was able to swap the position of two. That means one, two got at the very end, right? There is the point where I utilize my end pointer. So now this is taken care of and I will reduce it by one, correct? That means now whatever I have to do, I have to do it at this location, right? Because this is already taken care of. Now come back where we left things. So right now we are looking at zero, correct? So zero is red and it has to remain at the starting position. So it means that this is at the correct position. And what we can do is we can advance both our start and the middle. So this is actually telling me that, okay, I am done with this part of the array and I am done with this part of the array, right? Now look at the next element. This is zero again. So zero has to be at the left and we are only at the starting position, correct? So once again, what I will do is I will move my middle pointer and I will move my start pointer. Now, where are we? We are at two and that is a blue pointer, correct? So we know that this has to go at the very end. So what I'm going to do is I will swap this two with the element that is at the end pointer. Once I do this swapping, this two goes over here at the end and this one will come over here. Since we swap the end position, this end pointer will move one step backward, right? So you see, now we are done with this section of the array and we are done with this section of the array. Where did we left things? We left things over here, right? Now we are at one. And where should one go? One should remain at the middle, right? And since we operated on middle, what I'm going to do is I will move this middle pointer one step ahead now. So now look at your array again. Right now I am at this location, correct? This is again one and it should remain wherever it is. So what I'm going to do is 
I will move my middle pointer one step ahead again. So what I'm kind of doing over here is if you get a zero, just swap this zero with the element at the start pointer. And then you're going to move both your start pointer and the middle pointer. If you get a two, just swap this two with the element at the end pointer. And then you are going to just move your end pointer one step backwards. If you get a one, this should remain at the middle and you do not have to perform any swapping. Just move your middle pointer one step ahead, right? So following this algorithm, where are we right now? We are at one again. And what do we do? Don't do any swapping and just move your middle pointer one step ahead, right? Where are we now? We are at zero. So following our algorithm, we have to swap this zero with the element at the start location, correct? So once I perform this swap, zero gets over here in the beginning and then I will move my start pointer one step ahead and I will move my middle pointer one step ahead. Now, once again, look at the element. This is one and it should be at the middle. We do not do any swapping and just move your middle pointer one step ahead. Just look at the last element now. This is a zero. So it has to be swapped with the first position or the start pointer. So once I perform this swapping, my array looks like this and I will move my start pointer one step ahead and middle pointer one step ahead. Now, as soon as your middle pointer gets ahead of the end pointer, that is where you have to stop. And that is how you know that you have completed the entire array. The middle pointer started from beginning and it went all the way to end and the end pointer started from end and it met at the middle. So this is where you stop and you know that you have traversed the complete array. So just look at your array now. All the zeros are together all the ones are together and all the twos are together. And hence, this is your answer. You kind of formed the Dutch national flag, right? And if you see, you did all of this in place without taking help of any extra array. Now, let us quickly do a dry run of the code and see how it works in action. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement this solution. And on the right, I have this sample array with me that is passed in as an input parameter to the function sort colors. Oh, and by the way, this complete code and its test cases are also available on my GitHub profile. You can find the link in the description below. Moving ahead with a dry run. What is the first thing that we do? First of all, we declare all of our three pointers, right? The start, middle and the end. So start starts at zero. That is the first location. That is where middle also starts. And the end location starts at the very end pointer. So now you have to start looping. That is where I start a while loop where mid is less than equal to end because that is how you know that, okay, this is where you have to stop. Now in this while loop, what will happen is you are going to iterate over each element of the array using your middle pointer. And then based upon all the three cases, you are going to perform your operations. Now, these three cases are the exact same cases that we discussed in our algorithm one step earlier, right? That means either the element could be zero or it could be one or it could be two, right? So what happens when the element is zero? When the element is zero, you have to swap with the starting index, right? And that is exactly what I do. This swap function is a very basic function that just takes in an array and then two parameters. And it will swap the values at those two parameters, right? So I swap it with the first index. And then what do I do? I increment both my middle and the start, right? What happens if it is one? If it is one, you don't have to change anything and you just move your middle pointer one step ahead, right? And remember the third condition. If it is a two, what do you do? You will swap the current number with the very end index, right? And that is exactly what we do over here. Once you have swapped, what did you do? You move your end pointer one step backwards, correct? So you move your pointer one step backwards and then you break. So this loop will continue until your middle traverses all the elements up till the end variable, right? And then what will happen is once this loop exits, your array will have all the elements grouped together. And all of this happened in place without taking any extra space. The time complexity of this solution is order of n and the space complexity of this solution is order of one because you do not take any extra space to arrive at your solution. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that whenever you encounter these kind of problems, they are pretty plain and very simple to understand, right? You could have achieved the result just by sorting the array, correct? So in these kind of problems, pay attention to what the interviewer is actually asking you. For instance, in this problem, you had to come up with an in-place solution, right? 
and there was an additional condition that you have to come up with a solution with just one pass of the array. So keep these conditions in mind and it is always a good idea that you ask your interviewers these kind of questions that okay what is the time complexity do you expect? Okay what kind of a solution are you expecting? Can I come up with a solution that can be done in some extra space? So all of these questions are very relevant and this is what makes this problem so important. So while going throughout this video, did you face any problems or were there some moments which you could feel that okay, this is not an efficient approach and you could do something better. So tell me everything about it and we can discuss it all together. Tell me everything in the comment section below and I will love to discuss all of them with you. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also let me know what problems do you want me to solve next. Until then, see ya.